Hey guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we'll be talking about versioning our API. Now, the reason we'd want to version our API is that over time, our functionality will evolve. There are times when we may change the way our endpoints behave, change some verbs or the way the payload is structured, all of those things. But then you don't want to just do that and then all of your clients one day wake up and realize that they have to change their entire code base because you implemented a change in your API. So versioning the API allows you to kind of run a parallel between the old way of doing things and the new way of doing things. And then eventually you can phase out the, the, the one that all the clients have, of course, after adequate warning and education around the new uh, de facto standard that you're introducing. So right now we want to talk about versioning and our journey is going to start right here in, in NuGet where we're going to get the Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC versioning library. So you can go ahead, search for that and install it and then after you've done that we're going to go over to service extensions and we're going to add a new function and we're calling this one configure versioning of course you know you can call it whatever you're comfortable with but right now we're calling it configure versioning and then inside this function we're going to have code similar to this so we're saying services dot add api versioning and then we're going to include an option initialization where we're saying report api versions true so report api versions means that there will be a header in our responses saying this is the version that you are using so when our clients talk to the api we're going to say in the response yes you just hit this api version we're going to assume the default version when unspecified so if we have one two three api versions and the client failed to specify that they want to use version one three etc then we're just going to use a default one which we have gone ahead and specified below where we said the default api version is going to be api version one so you can go ahead and include any missing references as usual and then after you've done all of that we can go over to the startup and we can register our services so i'll just put that one below here all right now what we're going to do is create a new controller so i'm just going to go to add controller we'll choose an api and i'll just leave it empty and then for example sake i'm going to call this one country v2 all right so country v2 controller so we have a new controller and i'm just going to initialize it with some of the things from the original country controller so i'm just going to copy all of these things so i'm just i just want one endpoint just for testing purposes so the one endpoint that we're dealing with will be to get so go ahead and include any missing reference well actually i'm going to change the way this one accesses data so instead of it using the unit of work i'm going to let it implement the db context directly so this is private database context so of course remember that that is taboo you don't you don't really want to do that while it will work it's not best practice to have the api looking directly at the data but for this example i'll just do that so that we have a different return type between the two controllers so let me just go ahead and initialize this as quickly as possible and then once that is done once that is injected and this is country v2 controller all right so we can specify the root here to be the same thing as the original country control because remember they all go to con to controller right so this would be api slash country however this by default would be api slash country v2 but what if i said i don't want the controller name i want it to be the same endpoint now if it's the same endpoint by default the api would not know where to go because it's going to see this one with the root and see this one with the same root and it wouldn't know where to go now what i can do is specify that this one is api version and then specify that this one is 2.0 all right that should be a string so api version 2.0 so what will happen now is that the client will need to specify which endpoint it is that they hope to hit. All right, so I'm just going to 
hurry up and clean this up. We don't have any request params in this situation. And I just cleaned up the rest of it. So I didn't want to bore you with my cleaning up, but this is all that we're doing. We're just saying get countries and it's going to return context.countries, which is just going to get the list of countries in the database and return that. All right. So the return type here will be different from the DTO return type of our original endpoint. All right. So let us take this for a test drive and see how this works. Out. Now, if you remember in our configuration, we had said that we should assume the default version when unspecified. So what we did here was just to repeat the same call that we always do to our endpoints. We just said API slash country and we're getting back our countries. But then now if you look in the header section, you'll see that you have the API supported versions 1.0. Do recall that our configuration would have set 1.0 as our default, all right? So that is working. It realizes that there are versions and it's returning the result set from the default one. Now, how do we get our client to know how to specify which version they want? There are a few ways to do this. Number one, we can request it via query string. So we can say, if you want the other one, you pass in via query string or via param, let's just put it in the param, API dash version, and then we would say 2.0, and then they send, you would see that we get back a 200 okay, and the supported version is 2.0. So let me, let me put this into a bit more context so we can visualize it. So we know that we have two controllers. We have controller, country v2, which has the same root as the original ones. I'm going to put breakpoints at the respective functions. And then we're going to see which one gets hit based on which request. So I'm just going to repeat the request for version 2.0. And then when Visual Studio lights up, you see it is hitting the new controller that we set up using the same endpoint, except we're passing in the query string that we want version two. All right, so I can continue. It hits the database and it returns the data accordingly and that's fine. But then if I don't include the param and then do the same request, notice it's hitting our original. So that is how we can have more than one controllers with the same root, except they're different versions. So that is a quick, way for the client to specify that they want version two. If they don't specify, then we're going to send them to version one. Now, another way that we can do this, and I'm just going to stop this right now. Another way that we can specify which one is which version or allow the client to specify which version they want is to modify the root. So I can actually kind of superimpose right here in between the word API and the endpoint name and say that I want you to pass in V colon and the API version. All right. So when we do that and run, I'm going to kind of modify the original endpoint request. So initially we had API slash country slash we put in the query string to get version 2.0, but then now I modify the root. So I should be able to say 2.0 right here in the URL, right? So API slash 2.0 slash country. And do I still have the breakpoint? Yes, I do. So let's see if it gets hit and it does get hit. So you see, that's another way that the, the client can specify which version of the API they want and the endpoint. So version 2.0, they specify 2.0, so it hits the appropriate endpoint. Now, there might be a situation where you don't necessarily want to augment the URL because right now we have to augment or we are forcing the clients that they have to change their base URLs, all right? So they have to say either slash API slash 2.0 slash endpoint or they have to pass it in as a query string. So another way that we can get the versioning to work, let me just stop debug, is to add a configuration to our service extension for versioning where we say option dot API version reader. And if we just take a little look at what this is doing, it is saying it's, uh, it's used to read the API service when specified by a client, all right? 
So then we can say new header API version reader. So what is it about the incoming request that we want to read, right? So we're saying we want the header API version reader and we're looking for a header by the name of API version. So this will allow us to one, not only keep our route the way we had it before, but enable the client to just add a header instead of having to change their entire URL. So let us try that one. So back in Postman, I'm just going to remove the 2.0 from our URL. And then what I'll do is specify in the headers section. So you have headers selected, API dash version. So that's a new header that I want to pass over, 2.0. And then when I send that, we hit our breakpoint in our version 2.0 controller. All right, so quite a few ways. You, you have different functionalities or different methods of doing things instead of introducing too many breaking changes all in the, the code base that everybody's already subscribed to. You can phase in a new one and just call it version this, version that, and have them pass in the header for the appropriate version when needed. Now, one more thing that I'm going to show you on this topic is how you can specify that something is deprecated. So in a situation, and I'm just going to continue using this one because this is experimental. Let's say you had a version 3.0. So now version 2.0 is deprecated or it's no longer the preferred version. So you can actually add to the annotation here that the deprecated value of this API version is true. So what would happen is that when it sends the header across for a response, and we can test that here. So this was this is a previous request. So I'm going to run another request, hit the breakpoint, continue, but then look at it now. This is now saying API deprecated version 2.0. So now it's no longer just saying, oh, you're hitting the API version. It's letting you know that this one is no longer the preferred one, right? It's probably near end of life, whatever it is. So those are ways that you can actually implement versioning in your API to help control how you phase in your changes as you go along.